My guest in Azatutun studio is Zare Sinanyan, the mayor of Glendale City, uh, where at least 100,000 Armenians live exactly. there, right? Uh, Mr. Sinanyan, how important is this event, this huge uh, uh, protest is for you? Just These protests are extremely important for, I believe, the population of Armenia, but also for the Armenian diaspora because they're witnessing um, a transformation in the government that uh, they attach huge hopes with. And the hopes are of the creation of uh, a more uh, free and democratic homeland, a country where the rights of the residents are uh, respected, everyone is treated equally by the law, and a place where the diaspora can um, have a deeper connection to and uh, diaspora can connect its own future hopes with. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us more about Glendale City? What, what is it? And because we're, the, we're now this, uh, trying to uh, present mm -hmm. the, our audiences in our other target countries like Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, and other countries, they have no idea what is Glendale. Certainly. Glendale is one of the um, cities in the Los Angeles County. There are over 80 cities that comprise what is greater Los Angeles area, Los Angeles County. Glendale is the third largest in that county after the city of Los Angeles, city of Long Beach. Glendale is the third with an approximate population of about 215 to 220,000 people. It's, um, uh, it's located in the north central part of Los Angeles County, very well situated, uh, connected with five freeways to the rest of the county. Um, it's, it's a very nice city. Um, it has a uh, very vibrant uh, and, and even li you know, a developing downtown, and then has bedroom communities sp spread out throughout, throughout the neighborhood. Um, it's a business center. It, it is uh, the city where part of Disney Studios is located, DreamWorks is located in Glendale, large companies like um, Yellow Pages, Legal Zoom, uh, Avery Dennison are all headquartered, uh, Whole Foods are all headquartered in, in Glendale, California. Um, we, but most notably, of course, as far as the Armenian uh, population is concerned, it is, I think you, you and I just mm -hmm. went through an analysis, it's the third largest Armenian populated city in the world. Yeah. Um, after Yerevan and then Moscow. And of course, considering that Moscow is, uh, is a megapolis and spread out, Glendale has a much more concentrated population of, of Armenians uh, who are really from all over the world. But the, the largest contingent of the Armenian uh, population in Glendale stems from uh, and originates from Iran. And the second largest group originates from the Republic of Armenia, whether mm -hmm. it's Soviet Armenia yeah. or the Independent Republic of Armenia. And uh, you, you yourself, you were born I myself in was born in Soviet Armenia and moved right. here during the Soviet uh, time, uh, right before the collapse of the Soviet Union, and have resided in, the, in that general area, Burbank, Glendale area, mm -hmm. for the last 30 years. Uh, and how, <laughs> how would you evaluate this, what is happening now, these days, in Armenia, like uh, as a democratic experience, as, as an Armenian, that mm -hmm. you were born here and it's, uh, it's unheard of, it's unprecedented. It's, it's, uh, it's truly un unheard of, it's unprecedented, it's uh, almost miraculous to uh, those that have been following uh, Armenia's sort of development in the last 30 years and especially the last two, three weeks. It's unprecedented in the sense that although it kind of resembles the, uh, re uh, the revolution that took place from 1990 to 91, which led to independence, it's very different this time around. It's different because it's not, it doesn't originate from anything other than the idea of a transfer of power, a revolution, which in 88 was different because it started as an Artsakh Nagorno-Karabakh freedom movement. It's also different because this time it truly is a youth movement. It started with the youth, it is led by the youth. When you look at the stage um, on which the leadership stands in, in Azad Utsian Harapadak in Freedom Square, it is comprised almost exclusively of uh, individuals that are within the age of, you know, 30 <laughs> to 45 years old. Uh, and it's very unique because I think this generation is uh, an internet generation. You, know, you can call it many names, you can call it a TUMO generation for Armenia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this generation is very different. It's not, it doesn't carry the baggage of the Soviet corrupt system. It is nonconformist. 
it doesn't say, you know, well, these are how things are, and we just have to make do. No, they're saying, no, it shouldn't be like this, and we're going to change it. And I think we all hadn't quite grasped that there was a critical mass of this type of thinking individuals in the Republic of Armenia, and there had been, and they took things into their own hands, and they used this opportunity, this egregious sort of, you know, the uh, fraudulent almost change of constitution, and then, you know, trying to push another, the same leader for another term. Uh, people were really concerned uh, with Armenia train, you know, turning into an Azerbaijan-esque kind of a country where dynastic rule continues and democracy is suppressed. Already the international bodies were referring to Armenia as not a semi-authoritarian but almost a fully blown authoritarian government. But all of that is being reversed. Mm. We're, we're now a beacon, a beacon of, of democracy and peaceful transfer of power to the choice of the people. Of course, this is only sort of the opening blow in a mm. long war. And, and when I war, I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about an internal sort of societal transformation that Armenia has to undergo, undergo and embrace the, the, free, uh, uh, the, freedom, the freedom and the freedoms that are necessary in order for Armenia to survive. Now, the question about Nikol Pashinyan, you, have you met him? Or, or I have met him. I've, I've been friends with Nikol Pashinyan yeah. for and, uh, several uh, years. What is your impression? Is he <coughs> populist in political terms, or is he really, truly dem Democrat? Well, I think he fundamentally... In terms of democracy, not... In terms of the, the, the small d democracy. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's uh, truly uh, a believer that uh, Armenia's future is... Uh, inalienably tied to the democratic form of government. It, Armenians are cos cosmopolitan people, whether they realize it or not, because we have a, a diaspora that is, in population terms, three times larger than the population of Armenia. The connections between Armenia and the West and the rest of the world are so strong and, and, and so wide that you can't s contain Armenia and you can't say, well, you know what, we're going to have an authoritarian system, but we can go on for the next hundred years, and generations will simply transform and, and move things mm -hmm. forward. We don't have that luxury because it's very easy for an Armenian who does not want to conform to a more repressive form of government or economic uh, injustice to just pick up and go. They can leave. They have that option. Uh, so that's not a sustainable model for Armenia. And I think Nikol Pashinyan realizes that he understands that uh, a statehood that exists for the benefit of its residents and uh, the state interest has to be uh, supreme above all else is the only way for Armenia to survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last question I would like to ask about Glendale Armenians. Uh, and most of them were, uh, you know, in their you know, Facebook pages, in their statements, would say that we will come back mm -hmm. when our, co our country is free. Now, they even uh, I saw some of them uh, taking part in these demonstrations, and they're really they're, they're you know, resolute yeah. they want to come back do you believe that this will happen or? i think there will be a large number of individuals that will come back they will not all come back and they will not all come back immediately that that just wouldn't happen uh, many residents in glendale and throughout the western world are very comfortable where they and are armenia still needs these remittances of right? course and the remittances are still important for armenia hopefully it gets to, an econ yeah. to a point in its economy where they are remitting yeah. funds to their relatives <laughs> in the west hopefully that day comes but currently that's a very important issue but i think most importantly psychologically a door that had been shot to uh, folks in the, in the diaspora a metaphysical, you know, sort of a metaphorical yes. door and an actual, actual physical door. That door is now open. They, they, have, they can psychologically see themselves in the future, if they so choose, to live in their own homeland. Whereas just a month ago, it seemed like really uh, an opportunity that was limited to a very select group of idealists, mm -hmm. especially young people who just wanted to live in the homeland. And those numbers were really minuscule. Yeah. But now it, it's, it's quite a, a real prospect. Many thanks. Thank you so Thank much you so for much, coming Mr. to Tamazian. our studio. Thank you for Thank the you. opportunity.